Welcome back to EM Ottawa Trauma Video. In this video, we'll discuss the last three steps of the primary survey. First, circulation. Circulation follows airway and breathing assessment. The goal for circulation is to control active hemorrhage by direct pressure and ensure the patient has adequate tissue perfusion by replacing blood loss. Any obvious bleeding is controlled by direct pressure such as surgical clips, staples, or by your own fingertips. Sometimes we even use tourniquets to temporarily slow down the bleeding. Losing blood in the trauma will cause hemorrhagic shock in a trauma patient. We use vital signs and the patient's level of consciousness to estimate the degree of blood loss and decide on treatment. There are four classes of hemorrhagic shock. If the patient have lost less than 15% of their blood volume, the only vital sign difference you see is an elevated heart rate. The blood pressure should still be the same. In terms of treatment, the patient should only need crystalloid fluid until the heart rate normalizes, either normal saline or Ringer's lactate. In class 2 shock, the patient has lost about 15 to 30 percent of their blood volume. The heart rate will remain high and now the blood pressure will start to fall. The pulse pressure that is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure, will narrow. In terms of treatment, it is still crystalloid fluid until both the blood pressure and heart rate normalizes. Class 3 shock. When 30 to 40 percent of the blood volume is lost, the patient's heart rate will be even faster the blood pressure drops even lower, and now the patient would have altered level of consciousness. They might be agitated and confused. And these patients, on top of crystalloid fluid, we would also be giving blood. When more than 40% of the blood volume is lost, the patient is in class 4 shock. The heart rate again will be fast. The blood pressure low. And now the patient will be uptunded instead of merely being confused or agitated. For this patient, crystalloids and blood would also be given. until the vital signs and the level of consciousness start to return to normal. Let's go back to our patient. His vital signs after the breathing assessment is as follows. Heart rate of 160, blood pressure of 70 over 50, and it was obtended on arrival. What class of shock would he be in? As you can see, his heart rate is high, blood pressure is low, there's also true decrease LOC. He will be in class four shock. He will need fluids and blood. Once circulation is addressed, we will continue with the disability assessment. Disability assessment is a quick check of the neurological status. We do a global score, a gross motor and sensory exam, and a pupil exam. There are two global score. The first one is the AFPU scale. This scale measures the best response of the patient, whether they are awake spontaneously for A, whether they only respond to voice, to pain or unresponsive. 
Another global score we use is the Glasgow Coma Scale, or GCS. It measures three responses, eyes, verbal, and motor. This again measures the patient's response to outside stimuli. Eye scores are out of four, verbal score are out of five, and motor score are out of six. For eye score, patient gets four from spontaneous eye opening, three for opening for voice, two to pain, and one if they do not open at all. For verbal score, patients are given points to answer questions. Let's say you ask your trauma patient, where do you think you are right now? If they say hospital, they would get five points for being oriented. If they say home, they would be confused. They get four points. If they answer in words, but they are inappropriate words, they get three points. If they answer in sounds only, they get two points. And if there are no sounds, one point. For motor score, patient gets six points for obeying commands. Five for localizing to pain, as in they're able to locate where it hurts. Four, for withdrawal to pain, as in you give the patient a painful stimulus and the patient's body move away from the site of the painful stimulus. Three points for flexion posturing and two points for extension posturing. We will discuss these two in the next slide, and one for no movement at all. Flexion posturing is also known as decorticate posturing. In response to a painful stimuli, the patient's elbow would abnormally flex with the fists clenched. The extension posturing is also known as decerebrate posture. In response to a painful stimuli, the elbows and the feet abnormally extend. Once you have all the scores in the three categories, the scores are now added together. After the global score, we also do a growth motor and sensory exam to check for all four extremities. Patients are asked to wiggle their toes and move their hands, whether they can feel the top of their feet and their fingertips. A more detailed exam will be done in the secondary survey. At last, the pupils are checked for size, symmetry, and reaction to light. Let's go back to our patient. He opens his eyes to pain, he withdraws his body, and there was no verbal response prior to intubation. What is his GCS? For I score, he gets two. For verbal, he gets one. And for motor, he gets four. And hence, this patient's GCS is seven. The last part of the primary survey is exposure. We need to expose all of the patient's skin to check for injuries. All clothing would be removed at this point. We always have to be careful to keep the patient warm with blankets after the clothing is being cut off. That concludes our primary survey and resuscitation. Please refer to the next video for the secondary survey.